Are you looking to create a property partnership with your family and friends, but worried about their tax implications? Then you better watch this video of how I save you tax. As the video suggests, I'm looking to help you to create a property partnership business, which then helps you to save some tax as well. Let's get into the slides now as we go through the details. So let's make a start then of creating you a property partnership business in the aim of saving tax, but whilst creating a legacy. And that's what I want to talk about today is uh, there's going to be a fundamental uh, criteria that you must fulfill uh, for HMRC purposes. And that is that you're not creating a sham. A sham basically means that you've created a partnership in order to save tax and nothing else. Well, what I wanted to do is look at tax, but look at tax from a side benefit, if you like. It's about creating a legacy for your family. That's why we, as parents, will create a property investment portfolio so that we may be able to pass those on to our children for them to have a better choice, better lifestyle, and ultimately more money than we started with ourselves. Now, the problem is with that is that if we pass away as parents and then give these assets to the children, they don't really value them or indeed know how to run a business. So it might be better really as parents to get our children involved in our property business as soon as possible. That means that they can part of it, they can share the workload and share some of the benefits as well whilst creating an ultimate legacy that may be passed through the generations to create wealth for the family as a whole. And so we're going to go look, you can do this uh, partnership looking at uh, the dad, the mum and indeed the children involved. Now the one caveat to children is if you have minors and dependents um, on you, so someone who is aged below the age of 18, is a dependent and any income you try and pass on to them will be deemed as your income, not theirs. So don't try and get away from saving tax on that one. Um, indeed, if they are a student and working away and fully dependent on you to have income, then again, there is that issue of that taxable income that you try and pass on to them will still be deemed to be yours and therefore problems will arise. A partnership business just means that on your tax return you are completing the green pieces of paper rather than the pink salmon coloured piece of paper on your tax return when you're completing your property profits. That's all. There are some great detail we need to go into, but you can have a look at these yourself by going onto this URL for HMRC's website talking about partnerships. Interestingly enough, you will see the thing of Partnership Act 1890, which is what I'm going to be focusing on now. You'll notice that there are some legalities, uh, there are some things that are legislation, which basically govern the way we use partnerships. The big thing for you is a partnership cannot be a sham. It has to be a legitimate business. You're not setting up this partnership merely to create a tax saving. What does that mean? Well, you need to create a business. So you and your husband or you and your wife or civil partner need to be working together in this business to create a profit. You must be happy to share the losses and any risks associated with it, whether that's legal or otherwise. And indeed, if you have letting agents, well, you are not a business, you're a passive investor. So you must manage those tenants as well. Don't worry, you could use your letting agent to find you a tenant for you, but once your tenant moves into your property, you will have to manage that tenant throughout its journey or their journey. And um, that means you are a legitimate business and you can tick off most of the boxes now for Partnership Act 1890. Why might you create a partnership and did what is it? Well, you may already be a partnership, but not getting the benefits. What do I mean by benefits? Tax benefits, ultimately. You could have a situation where you've got James and Sally. James is a high rate taxpayer, paid for a blue chip organisation, and Sally is at home managing the tenants of the properties and indeed any repair work that's going on as well. 
Now, that lies a problem because it is James that is getting the money from those uh, properties on his tax return, which basically means she gets no income derived from that property portfolio. So is this fair? I would argue, no, it's not. It does mean that I think that there's a legitimate partnership going on here. Sally manages the tenants and James puts the money in. Is that a partnership? Yes, of course it is, because ultimately they are working together. The fact that James is working hard on his job, but providing the money, the, the uh, finances, and probably getting involved in the process of buying properties, and then Sally's doing the day-to-day -day works. Well, ultimately, isn't that what an MD, an FD, and our operations director does? Yes, of course it is. So ultimately, there is a business going on here. And unfortunately, in this current situation whereby James has got the properties all in his name, it means that poor old James has got £12,000 worth of taxable income. That's 40% tax, guys. My example in this video, which you will see a link just appearing above my head now, um, you will notice that, uh, that James not only will pay 40% tax, but it could go way over 100% tax. So the only winner of owning properties, if that current structure is upheld, is HMRC. So we do need to do something about it, don't we? And this is the benefits, really, of a partnership agreement between husband and wife, James and Sally, in our example. We can deem the profits to be shared equally and, and equitable. What do we mean by that? Well, we could base it on the fact that you're husband and wife. It could be a 50-50 partnership, couldn't it? Um, you, we could say, well, Sally puts in most of the work, so let's have Sally have 75% and James has 25%. Yes, you could, but from a HMRC, if that was inquired upon, how would you answer that? It's not as easy uh, unless you say, well, she's putting most effort in and I'm not doing so much. Well, okay, that seems fair but you do need to have it documented. Uh, you need to be aware that the profit split does not need to reflect capital and income at the same percentage. You may just say, well, James uh, has put in 80% of the income, sorry, of the, the investment money, and that's his share, 80%, and she, Sally gets 20%. Uh, they may say, well, the income doesn't reflect the amount of capital because it's the amount of what they're putting in. So we'll deem that to be the other way around, 80% to Sally and 20% to, to James. So that really does depend on a family agreement. Um, you could use the lower spouse's earnings. So we mentioned that Sally has no income at all, even though she's doing genuine work for the property business. So something's not quite right there. And you could look to incorporate your property business within two to three years. I do strongly urge our clients to look at three years and then incorporate their property business just to make sure that there are no tax uh, HMRC inquiries. Documentation wise, it's easy to and tempting to do it yourself, but I think you're gonna miss a lot of information. A legal professional will understand the Partnership Act 1890 more than you will. They're used to writing legal documentation and they will ask you good questions in which your answers will fill in the blanks of their personal, uh, their partnership agreement. Now it does cost you money, but don't look at the price of the service, look at the cost of getting it wrong and having a tax inquiry. That is where the most of the cost will be. So make sure that you have the deed of trust done, the partnership agreement in place, and you have your partnership also registered with HMRC. You could do that yourself online, to be fair. You can use the SA 400 and 401 to register your partnership, which does mean that the partnership gets a unique tax reference code, uh, which means also that the partnership itself has to complete a tax return year on, year out. So you've got a tax return for the partner, each partner, this is. So husband and wife, that's two tax returns. And then you have the third tax return for the partnership as well. Uh, don't forget to have a bank account for the partnership. So ultimately, you want to keep everything in one place. So make sure the partnership bank account has been set up with two signatories. So let's go into this situation we just described about James and Sally. They're husband and wife. They agree to in life to share 50-50 of everything. 
Well, therefore, why don't we have that in the partnership agreement? We share the profits 50-50. But we do need to reflect the fact that Sally's doing some work. So out of the profits um, of the property portfolio, Sally is going to take £6,000 worth of salary wages um, to manage the tenants and the properties. And that sounds quite fair. So distributable profits is now reduced from £12,000 by that 6000 wages being allocated to Sally. And we've got now £6,000 worth of profits to be distributed 50% each to James and Sally. Which means that James has now got £3,000 and Sally has got £3,000 worth of profits as well. Now you can see there straight away that James will have a taxable income of £3,000. And that means he's got £1,200 of tax to pay because he's a high rate taxpayer and he's going to be subject to 40% tax. Sally, however, has got £6,000 worth of uh, salary plus the £3,000 worth of profits, means that she has no tax because it's below her personal allowance. Now, this is a legitimate business. She's doing legitimate work for the business. So why should she not take some earnings from it? In year two, you may decide, well, hold on a minute. This sounds good, doesn't it? Let's make a more of a tax advantage by sharing this uh, profit splits even more. So what we'll do, we'll do James at 20% and Sally at 80%. It sounds great. Let's go for it. Um, and that sounds fair enough from the outset. You've got now a profit split still of £6,000, but 1200 of that goes to James, which is a much reduced from the 3000 And Sally picks up an additional 1800 to get this 4,800 profit split. However, huge problems with this approach, stamp duty land tax. So stamp duty land tax, if you look at the Finance Act 2003, you will notice that the uh, that particular section, which is paragraph 14, talks about if you do uh, have a partnership business of any type and you wish to change the profit split, you will be subject to stamp duty land tax. It is not based on the capital movement of those assets. It is based on the actual profit split. So be very, very careful. We see a lot of accountants advising at, uh, previously to, uh, when they come on board with us, clients, uh, and then they have this whole fear if they have an inquiry because they've changed their profit split year on, year out. It's a dangerous thing to do. So what I would suggest you do is look at the amount of wages that you have. So you have a partnership agreement and you say, we're gonna be flexible on the wages based on the amount of work that's been done. Now you could legitimately say, well, Sally's now looking at properties to buy. She's dealing with letting agents now to look for tenant finding. They've got HMOs, so from single let properties to HMOs means there's a lot more tenants to look after. There's a lot more work generally being done. Sally, therefore, rather than changing the profit split, she gets more of the salary. So she gets now 9,000 pounds worth of salary. And then she gets this 1,500, which is the 3,000 pounds worth of profits at 50% is her 1,500. James has still got 1,500 pounds worth of profits. And I appreciate they're going tax, but there is no stamp duty land tax with this apportionment of wages and keeping the profit split as it was when you originally agreed it. What does that mean? Well, ultimately, we've got James now being taxed at £600. Sally has no tax at all because it's still below her uh, below her personal allowance. Uh, so she has no tax at all. But as you can, pre you can probably appreciate now, this before we had this £3,000 tax bill. In this one strategy alone, we've saved £2,400 worth, worth of tax. Your tax liability and tax saving could be even more than what we specified here. So this could be a very good strategy for you to create a partnership business that's legitimately creating a business for you and your family, but it has the benefit of saving you tax as well. We do need to think about some of the tax impacts that it may have by creating a partnership. If you have got, if you do a transfer between husband and wife, there are no tax implications. If however, you decide, well, let's do the profit split to our adult son in terms of capital, there could be a, a capital gains tax liability. So you do need to be careful when you're creating this partnership agreement. As we've already said, you don't want to be changing 
the profit split from one year to another because it could invoke the SDLT tax charge. So be careful of that. You also need to make sure that each of the members of this partnership submits their own tax return, which includes the partnership details as well. And finally, we've already talked about it, but it's worth mentioning again, that they, the partnership itself has now got a UTR, UT, Unique Tax Reference Code, which immediately says to you that you need to do a tax return for that partnership as well. Guys, there's been a lot of details here and I do appreciate that. So if you do have any questions, make sure that you type your questions below the video box below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, there is a video coming up next week which talks about incorporating your property business. So if you have now got to the third year period, uh, you may want to look at your business uh, and incorporate that because you are worried about the risk, legal risk, as well as the tax risk as well. So I'll talk about the incorporating your property business in another video. But until then, my name is Simon Meshevich from Optimize Accountants and I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.